Chris just got home from work. And a little earlier, I was telling him like, it's sunny, but the panels aren't bringing in nearly what I think they should. So he was like, go out there and have a look at where the trees are and where the sun is. And we'll make some calculated decisions about which trees absolutely have to go because they're shading the panels. He came home, he literally like dropped his lunch bag, grabbed his chainsaw. So let's go see. minimal winter sun the better less trees more sunlight we're pretty conservative with the trees but sometimes for development they have to go except this grandpa tree i really want it to stay we'll see we'll see if i can put them off any longer <laughs> Next one's kind of freaking me out. It's like pretty close to the solar panels. It's right here. It's hard to tell from this angle, but I can't go over there, obviously. It's pretty darn close to the panels, so hopefully it goes the way he wants it to. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Chris is a pretty good faller. Like he's pretty confident with his saw. Still, like sometimes things are unpredictable. That went pretty good. I'm happy about that. It went really good. You never know which way they're gonna go. Well, any of them for that matter, but they do lean towards the lake. That made a big difference. I think so. I think that'll make a big difference too. No. Yeah. Chris. Christy. Come on. I don't think it's making that big of a difference. I think it's making a huge difference. I don't think it, I really just don't think it makes that big of a difference. Like how many hours a day? It would help. I think I gotta get rid of all those poppers too. Well, let's just do that instead. Firewood for days. So. What app do you got? I got, what is it called, this thing? It's a sun app. Sun tracker. I'll sun link tracker? it. I'll or I'll say anything. Oh yeah. Sun on track. Sun on track. Yeah. And it seems to work pretty good. Definitely gives you the idea of where the sun comes from and sets. Look at what is it? So we'll get from one PM on the shortest day of the twenty first of December to right around three. So it goes down over the horizon over there. Up there. And one last spruce tree at the end, close to the shore. Yeah. And then it sets just right, keep going right, like right there. Somewhere. Like right where it is now? Pretty it much. It's basically yeah. where it goes yeah. down December 3rd or December 21st. Yeah, right on top of the hill over there. So we've got not very much opportunity for sun. On is that two hours? I think so. Two hours of sun. <laughs> well, we get six hours of sun if you live somewhere that points south, but since we point west. Yeah. And with the trees, we're kind of limited. We can't log all the trees by the cabin. No. It's just too steep. I'll get you to hold the safety rope. Safety first. Yeah. And I'll tie it around my ankles. Safety Pete. Yeah, they're kind of over the bank, okay? Yeah, I can get that one, that one, and that one, and then the other ones are, that's too sketchy for me. Unless I'm, like, get some experience with cliff diving or something. <laughs> oh, Lord. Chris's dangerous tree removal, new career. You 
You're trying to negotiate me out of this tree, huh? So they dove into it there. I can see bark, or not bark, but wood in there. Like, I'm not saying it's like a healthy tree. I'm just saying it deserves respect. But it's getting attacked, so it's dying, right? Like, you can see the... Where the woodpecker's been pecking in there. Like, all the way up. He's probably just drilling holes no. for exploration. Once they get sick, the ants start to come around and they go after the food. Then they kind of finish it off. Speed the process. I feel like we should play the Lion King song. The circle of life. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That old cat still got it. <laughs> that cougar could climb better than her. What are you doing? She's stuck. You can do it, Lily. You can do it, Lily. If you're into some off-grid stuff, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Diesel preheat. One of those cheap Chinese heaters. Yeah, without the Chinese, our life would not be possible. Nope. Except your generator. English. English. What year was this gen set made? In the 50s or 60s, probably. I, I really don't know. It's old. It's pretty old, yeah. And it still works. Good. And you love it. Yeah. So it has how many sensors? None Zero. sensors. <laughs> None sensors. You got enough in that solar system. Right? Okay, let's see if this thing works. Oh, it lit up. <clears throat> it light up. And then just push power. On. That's pretty easy. So you fire this up because it's so cold outside that you got to preheat your old generator. Right, because really all we have out here is 12 volt. We don't have 120 out here until that thing starts. So right. So we got to run 12 volt, heat that up, and then get. So how do those 12 volt batteries stay charged then? There's a little trickle charger behind there on the behind the battery. Oh, so it just charges automatically when the gen set's running? That's right. There's a couple breakers you gotta flick here. You guys are learning with me. Ah. So you got this is the main breaker on. And this is an outlet. One of those outlets. This is the other outlet. Okay. And this is the main to the house. Yeah, I knew that one. And then when you turn that one on, you'll see on your LED screen or whatever it is what it's putting out. Okay. After it's been running and warm and Oh. oh, it's gonna start. It smells like diesel. Oh, it's freaking me out. It, it takes a while to. Let's move off grid. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> on the ground like there's nothing holding it up anymore just these big timbers well i don't know 
I don't think it'll be that bad. A little bottle jack and just re-level it back up again. Yeah, there's like timbers. And then that side there, it looks like there's logs. And we just need D-logs to fit. Each of those little pedestals is on a rock, hey? Yeah. It goes up and then it kind of levels off and I, I should be able to crawl in there a bit. It don't look that bad. But I think this needs to be leveled up. The cabin. Yeah, because I don't know why that chimney's falling down. So we're just up at the big cabin on the property and Chris was checking out underneath because it kind of looks like the wood stove chimney settled over the summer, uh, which is a little bit unnerving. <laughs> but he thought maybe that the floor had settled. So he had a peek under there and he figures it's not a big deal. He can just jack it back up. But if you haven't seen this cabin, I will show it to you. It was built in the 60s as a Bible camp bunkhouse and we were fortunate enough to get this property about three years ago and there is two cabins on it and this is the big one. We kind of turned it into a rec room. We come in here when it's too cold to be outside and spend a little time. mushroom? What the heck did you find? Do you think we can eat them? Well, if the squirrels were eating them. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah, that's pretty cool, eh? That's a lot of mushrooms. Lot of, I don't think I grabbed them all, but... What were you doing? Trying to re-insulate <laughs> the cabin since the squirrels took all the insulation. We need to get some different chinking in here. <laughs> Agreed. It's like never-ending feeding the Freaking squirrel. <laughs> Mushroom City. How busy are they, eh? They're making a nest. Just a cache. We are forever insulating the walls. You can literally see the light coming through them. <laughs> And then the squirrels will come along and take it all out again, just as fast as we can put it in. It was kind of cool. They, we have a big box of insulation and they filled it full of mushrooms. That was weird. Chris is trying to seal up some holes. 